Michael Van, and welcome back to another Era Quinn Caledrum video. We have been a couple of weeks off because we've been somewhere between summer holidays with school stuff actually done. We can get some stuff done. Um, work has been nuts for both of us, yeah. actually. Um, hobby stuff's been good. We just got back from TGX almost a month ago already, so sorry we're a little bit late. Fast. It's gone by fast. And we took a bit of a break. We spent a lot of time getting ready for stuff before TGX. Getting ready for TGX was busy. TGX was amazing. Oh, yeah. Um, and then it was just busy. <laughs> Life. Summer's busy. Um, so, finally finished up our Monster Mash final challenge, but we've got lots more coming. A um, couple more Monster Mashes, actually. We've got some surprise guests that won't surprise anyone, but they'll be very fun matches. And then we've got a whole bunch of other things that we're working on that you'll see as the m next couple months come by. We've done the Balrog um, conversion video. I've got a video I've got to work on for some elk, with because uh, Thrandall rides an elk, so I'm converting my Merkwood calf to ride on elk. So I've got some projects like that coming up. What are you working on? A bunch of stuff and nothing at the same time. Yeah, it's taken them a while. So I started, this is like at least four or five weeks ago, um, I started working on Iron Hill stuff and actually yeah. unboxing some of it and priming and starting to paint. Starting. I got a bunch of base colors done. <laughs> I just kind of gave up and forgot about it. Yeah, got busy for like with stuff. five weeks. It's been busy. So we're getting caught up again, but TGX was amazing. Um, before this video is done, we will loop a whole bunch of pictures so you can see the armies were beautiful. Oh, yeah. The uh, the gameplay was great. Good 40 people there. Um, we had a ton of prizing. You know, Adam and the Black Fire guys do a great job recruiting support for there, the event. And there are a lot of things we learned about the new meta. Yeah. And, and the new meta, this is the first big event after the new meta. So we saw a whole bunch of interesting things. <laughs> Um, a lot of big heroes. You know what? Let's start talking right there. So we will talk about the prizes and who won, and we'll show some videos of those things. And we will talk about the uh, Im some really impressive work done um, by the guys running the event and by the participants in the event, because the prizes were worth competing for. So um, Forge World trophies, they had the fancy one ring trophies, six of them. You know what? We should start there. Six of them. Really, really clever. And, you know, kudos to the Blackfire guys when they did this. Three of the trophies, no surprise. For the generals, first, second, third place. Yeah. Silver, gold, and bronze painted. Excuse me, bronze, silver, gold painted. Um, two for best painted, evil and good. And they were both painted uniquely. There is no one in the world that has one painted like those. Yeah, pretty cool looking. So we'll show you a picture of those. Um, and then I think my favorite, the sixth of the six trophies, um, Adam and the Blackfire team were trying to think about something really special they could do with this trophy because they're very special trophies obviously they're fairly unique yeah. you have to go to the big tournaments to even have a chance to win them and then you've got to do something special like win the tournament to be able to get these trophies so they painted it up really special and they gave it out as a not quite a lifetime achievement but kind of just a very special recognition trophy to Don Barnett kudos Don from the Ontario SPG League because Don has been there right from the beginning and has contributed so much to the league. He's like the staple guy in the oh, league. Yeah. One of the three founders. There were three. So kudos also to Evan Israel and to Jordan Giancitti. The three of them were the guys who started the Ontario League. The Facebook group now has over 750 members. The league official YouTube channel has 280-something, maybe more, members, uh, subscribers now. And Don has been to almost every event since the beginning. Every year. He's done a lot to promote the league and to recruit new players. He's done a lot to support them. He's consistently just invested more than most people in the league in just being there and you know helping build it. He's been on the admin right from the beginning. He's been serving and organizing. He's just done a lot. So very appropriate guy to recognize. Uh, if we were going to have a hobby hero in Ontario, he would definitely be right up there. Yep. So good on Adam for recognizing Don. I might possibly have been one of several people that Adam asked for ideas about what he could do with a special trophy. I know I'm not the only one, but I definitely was quick to say, if I had to pick, I'd pick Don. And so hands down, Don, you've earned it. Um, I know I only had a small contribution there, but definitely I voted for you. And so kudos to Adam. Really great idea that he was able to do that and great event to do it at. We had our members meeting at the TGX yep. event. TGX is a two-day event. Six games, 1,000 points. Five games. Sorry, six games last year, five games this year. And honestly, that was better. Yeah, six games was good. Five games was better. There was more time to enjoy the event, to socialize, to see some of the vendors, some great vendors. And to not get exhausted. Yeah, it's tiring. The big events are tiring. Yeah, and then in the night between the two, because it was a Saturday-Sunday event, the night between the two, we had our members meeting, which was um, cast live on our Facebook channel, on yep. the, the League Facebook channel, the OSBGL Facebook channel. 
uh, page and uh, had some great discussions there and that's where Don got his award. So very, very appropriate and well done on the Black Bear guys. So that's all I should say about that. Let's show the picture. Yes, multiple pictures yeah. all reeling through and relieving our boring faces from the screen. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so, um, and we will definitely show you pictures of the tables. Adam does a great job making sure there's good tables. Yep, there was a good a variety. variety. Yeah. Right. What, did you have a favorite table? Oh, um, I honestly don't care that much in terms of terrain. He's pretty competitive. He's usually thinking about how to use the terrain. <laughs> I don't care if it's like a mat, a really fancy looking mat with some cool stuff on it, or if it's like a carpet. I'll appreciate it for like the first 30, 40 seconds when I get to the table and then in. In the game but, mode. Yeah. I appreciate when the tables are different. And they were. Pretty much all of them. They had... I brought a couple desert-themed tables. So we had some terrain that uh, that I brought that contributed that way. There were a bunch of ruinous tables, which you expect. Middle-earth themes. There's lots of ruins. Oh, yeah. um, lots of fantasy terrain out there from a bunch of different suppliers. So there was some mm -hmm. stuff there that I recognized from GameMat.eu and from Urban Mats. Yep. So it's great to see that. And GameMat was one of the prize contributors as well. They were on the prize table. Some really great prizes, a couple of mats there. Um, just good value in the prizes period. Adam, oh, yes. Adam did a good job with that. Um, and a couple of the sponsors really stepped up and contributed some good value product. So that was great to see. Um, prizing. Did you have a favorite? Oh my goodness, favorite prizing. Yeah, so we should have had Brendel, his younger brother, my other son, on the show here to show off some of what he won. We'll get him involved in a video in the future. He did well, my goodness. Oh yeah. Got smashed. He got squished right to the bottom, got the wooden spoon. He got smashed so hard. He got hit worse than me at my first event. <laughs> which, And <laughs> somebody from Jackson Queen is very gifted and made this beautiful wooden spoon. So, sorry, Brendel, that I'm showing this off on your behalf. But this is just too nice not to show off. So here's a Thranduil. And he's playing a rendition of Smug here. We've got Dwarvish Runes on, yes, a wooden spoon. And it's got, you know, a cool little tag that's been burned and etched. Like, it, this is a... Beautiful little trophy. Um, and he got the first draw off of the prize table after the um, those who won the main trophies. The first, second, third, best painted, good and evil, and the best sportsman. And guess what he got? <laughs> the box uh, set. No kidding. The box set. The whole box set. He yep. played Easterlings. Took a 12-year-old yep. kid. And he's been playing with us, so he knows the rules. He's been practicing for a long time. He's, he's young, so we wanted to wait and make sure that he was ready to go to an event, and he was, and he was very prepared to lose, and we spent some time making sure he wasn't going to be a sore loser, and, and he did very well. He had a great time. As his dad, I got good feedback that he was a good sportsman, so I was proud of him, and he really, really wanted, if he was going to win a prize, because we knew there was going to be a raffle, and if he won a prize, he really wanted a troll for his Easterling army so he could convert a troll, and he would have been really happy with a troll and some Moranans if he could trade with some people and get some Moranans, so he got the whole box set. It, Spoiled kid. <laughs> it was great for him. Oh, Did yeah. really well. Thank you, Blackfire, for doing that. That was just a really lovely press. Now we have another box. And we have three boxes in this house. Yes, we're using all of the models from all three box sets. That's crazy. But, hey, that's great. We love this hobby. And for him, I, I, sorry, back to the, the Blackfire guys, smart prize to have on the table. Because for a newer player getting into the hobby, he's got three armies. And he's got stuff he can work on. And it's armies that will grow and expand. He's got to go get more Games Workshop stuff to be able to really yep. invest in those armies. He doesn't have a King of the Dead, but he's got an Army of the Dead. He doesn't have heroes for the Moranans. He's got the Witch King. He's got the Moranans. So it was good. Really, really good for him. Uh, and it allies in nice with what he already has. And it, it was great. The rule book's a real win and oh, whatever. Yeah. It was a great, great prize. So at the bigger events, it just makes sense. It's a good prize to have on the table. And all the other prizes were great, too. Um, he gave out some random prizes throughout the day, which I thought was really clever. Yes. They were like fun little trivia questions in between the rounds and during yeah. the rounds. Yeah. Um, so I only remember the one because I won it. There were other questions. Do you remember any of the questions? Uh, shoot. There was a lot of them about the Prancing Pony. Like like what yeah. animals were in it in certain scenes. and <laughs> Really clever. Stuff like that. Like, they, they must who have pays attention and looked to up, that stuff? Looked up Apparently random trivia. people do. Huh? So I got the dad one. I got the really easy one. What was the punishment? For your, your answering already, and I haven't even asked the question. What was the punishment for Mary and Pippin at lighting. Bilbo's going away party for, and I got the price, for lighting off the fireworks from Gandalf's cart, He's doing the dishes. So I got a price, spot price. Wow. And it was great as objective markers that uh, Garrett Pogson had put together, actually. A really great little kit of objective markers. 
uh, and a whole bunch of other sort of condition markers. So wow. there's a little transfix pin you can token and you put it on the table. And he had these all made up actually before the new edition hit and before yep. all this stuff became somewhat Before necessary. you could get the general pack with all the extra tokens in it. It's a, a special custom token kit. It's a great little kit. So fun prizes like that. And uh, yeah, just did a really great job. That added some fun throughout the day. Between rounds, you'd do a trivia question. And yeah, the big prizes at the end, and then a big raffle table that was loaded oh, yeah. with lots of product, lots of GW product. Super high value. It was ridiculous. Man. Yeah, well done. Very well done. So kudos, Blackfire. Thanks for a great event. The event was a lot of fun. I think two-thirds of the people there walked home with a prize. We all got swag bags. We all had a great time. We all had five games that we got in with a great group of people. We all got to see great tables and play on them. We got to see great armies. A lot of great work went into those armies. Oh, yeah. Did you have a favorite army that you saw? <sighs> we should probably well, start by honoring those who won the best painted, right? Yeah. Well, they already got a GW trophy. Yeah, they did. So. But they did a great job. So <laughs> Father Justin Bertrand did the best painted good. Yep, with his uh, gray company. I think he actually took the Legendary Legion, I believe. Yes, I believe he did. I think he did. I think he had the twins yeah. and Aragorn. He had the twins, Aragorn and Legolas, and then Haldir with not Haldir, Halbrad with yep. the banner. Yep, and a bunch of rangers. Yeah, 14, good looking army. Fourteen you know, or so. Father Justin paints yep. well, and he's painted a ton of stuff that has won or been a runner up for best painted at various events in the past oh, yeah. in the league. So not a surprise. He brought a beautiful army, beautiful display board. We've got a couple pictures of that. Um, best painted evil. You remember who it was? Uh, Nick Vanny. He is showing up. I tried. Two, I got smoked. They did a great job. He showed there. up to two events in the OSBGL that I'm aware of and won best painted at. Actually, no, he won, won best display at one and best painted at TGX. Yeah. I think he yes. won at ours when we yeah, did he Council won best of the Wise. display at ours. He had the Corsair yeah. ship. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. It, you know, when you see a player who takes pride in their work and they work hard, they deserve it. He clearly, clearly worked hard on it. It was a beautiful display, beautiful Far Harad army. And he brought a Mumak that was dressed was up to the like nines. three Mumaks that were there. Well, we'll talk about the meta and the themes we saw in a minute. But yeah, Thousand Point event, he brings some big stuff. So you see a lot of fun things. So he brought a beautifully painted Far Harad army. Oh, yeah. A bunch of um, half trolls I played against. Him. Camel riders. A bunch of camel yeah. riders and just really nice looking army. So um, unfortunately for him, when he and I played, it was a scenario that really favored me and the terrain on the board really favored me. It was just unfortunate for him. So my fire breathing dragon sort of poofed his Mumak. It was, uh, anyway, I felt bad for him, but we had fun. He was a great sport and he, uh, I voted for him for sportsmanship. Actually, he really was a great sport. We had a lot of fun. So, um, yeah, the sportsman. Award. I don't you know, Don and Garrett that already went. talked about this in their video, and they covered a ton of ground in their video. But Rob, congratulations! Um, I didn't get a chance to play Rob, but obviously the people who played him valued playing him. So good on that. It's a great group of guys. I, I was really just always pleased when we play with the Ontario League. There's a bunch of good people there who are just fun to play. Yep. So that was great. So those are the best painted. Who else did we see? Some real good looking armies. Um, honorable mentions. Um, I remember evil, so I'll say that. What you think of good? Charles Lynn. Charles, we miss you. Charles came all the way from Vancouver, Canada. Oh, yeah. Vancouver area. And he stayed with us for a couple of days. We were so glad we could host him. His army was beautiful and really clever. He had a really thin display board for a Far Harad army again. Yeah. Uh, no Mumek. He brought a bunch like of camels and half trolls. And, yeah. Kind of a nasty army, actually. And he plays it really well. I fought it twice. <laughs> <laughs> like at the drop. Right? Just for reference, twice. I had hunter orcs. I'll tell you how that yeah. went later. But yeah, yeah. yes. <laughs> you can see by his face. He doesn't even need to tell you. But yeah, Charles, great player. Oh, great yeah. artist. Really yep. talented artist. So he got runner up for the best painted evil and clearly yep. earned it. Oh, yeah. And uh, and really clever display, if I may say. Mm -hmm. um, little compact case that fits good on your lap in an airplane, because this is stuff we care about. You don't want to yeah. be putting that in the carry on, in, in your carry on, not in the uh, stowed luggage. And his display was just three flat little trays that slid right in the back of his case. The rest of it was all magnetized. Smart guy. Has clearly traveled before. Well done on, on Charles' part. So oh, yeah. Kudos to you, man. Um, good runners up. Do you remember? I don't remember who the runner up for good was. I'm thinking it might have been a Minas Tirith. I doubt it. Maybe. There were a number of beautiful armies. So we'll show you pictures. But lots of great stuff. I worked so hard on mine. Oh, I know then, who it was. I think it was Chris Masella. You know what? He always does a good job too. Yeah, with his Rohan? Rohan. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Wouldn't be a surprise. I think I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that's yeah. what that was. So themes. 
um, worked so hard on my army, I was going to say. And, and then Shadi was posting a bunch of beautiful pictures of his amazing army, which was my army. Ah! So, and then we teased each other when we got there and played the same army. Meta, we both took Balrogs. We saw big stuff at this tournament. You, part of that's because it's a thousand point event, but part of that is definitely the new meta. So we both took Balrogs. You, you mentioned say, already. When you say we, you're referring to yourself and Shadi. Shadi and I. Yeah, yeah. Shadi took a... I did not take a Balrog. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Shadi took a Monster Moria army. A Balrog, Fire Breathing Dragon. and Did he have fire? Yeah. No, he had uh, Fly and Tough Hide. Yes. So he took a big dragon and two Cave Drakes, and that was his army. I took a different Monster Moria. I had traded out the one Cave Drake. I had two Dwellers. So, and I took a Fire Breathing Flying Drake instead of Tough Hide. And I was glad That's I took the fire. That definitely mattered. So, two Balrogs. We saw, how many Moomax? Two? Three? Three, Moomax? Three, I believe. We saw four Army of the Dead. I think that was the most yep. common army. Yep. A couple of Deep Harad armies, obviously, with the Moomax, but then you know, but also with the Charles. the thing about the Army of the Dead, every list was the exact same. Well, except so, one. Except one. Well, yes, there is Garrett, who played actual, yeah. just pure Army of the Dead. And but like three of the, the lists, Return of the King Legendary Legion, literally copy and paste. It yeah. was, like, ridiculous. So interesting. I mean, they're kind of the new Iron Hills. They are ridiculous. That. And then we saw a lot of Minas Tirith. We saw three Minas Tirith. And interesting, first, second, and third at the event they were, all were all Minas Tirith. Mostly Gondor. Which, if you think yeah. about it, which faction received the most passive buffs in the new edition? Minas so Tirith. Yes, High Elves, and I know that uh, the OSBGL did their video on that and everything like that. Yeah, great but, video. If you haven't oh, seen yeah. the video, really good video from the, the guys, actually, Don, Garrett, and Drew, who have um, been around the OSBGL for a long time. And on the OSBGL channel, did a good dissect on what were the most impactful new faction bonuses and you know all of the they FAQs broke down which, and everything. Went which through armies the whole got hit list. the hardest and which armies got yeah. buffed the most. And I was really, actually, really helpful videos. I was really surprised Gondor didn't make top three for good guys that got buffed the most. Well, you know but what? They had a good so set of reasons why. So many of its things got buffed. High Elves, they just got twitched. Like, a bunch of their big heroes became nastier. They didn't really gain any new options, per se. Yeah. Gondor but just in became the a lot that, more flexible. Well, that's see, that's it. I, I would suggest that's it. The top three armies at TGX... Were a flexible mix of Gondor and Gondor's allies. Most had, of them were just shock, just yep. throwing in well, like four big heroes, heroes that were mounted on big horses. heroes like Aragorns and Gandalf the Whites and Elendils and some weird alliances going on there. Yeah, um, Devin, his list was disgusting, <laughs> and it wasn't even that bad from an ally alliance matrix perspective. Well, it was, but <laughs> so basically, yeah, impossible he had yeah. Aragorn, King Elisar, and Boromir of the White Tower. So you've got that timeline clash going on yep. with an army of Gondor. Then to make matters worse, you throw Elendil <laughs> into the mix. So you've got Devin, Elisar, we love you. Boromir, that was the worst cheese of the event, but we love you. <laughs> disgusting. What do you do well, to fight that? They so, just blitz your entire army. Well, so for then free. watch <laughs> watch what happens in uh, in DCHL videos where Devin talks about the strategy on oh, all yeah. these things. But the only comment I'll make. Impossible Alliances, I think, came out of the rules writers as a way to try to encourage theme. But when you go to the competitive events, the Impossible Alliances become a tool you can use. I if have you use it a carefully. note, which I am actually going to say in the video because this needs to get fixed. It is honestly disgusting. <laughs> when I saw this new the post with the errata, people were like, oh... Red alliances, they just became garbage. I look at that, I realize, hold up, different sections, they all break individually. So, like, for courage tests, which means if I take a red alliance with my goblin town and a shade, the shade doesn't take courage tests until yeah. the Angmar part of my army is broken. So they goof that up a bit. But if I just take the shade, it's never going to be broken. You ally a shade with anything somehow now? somehow manage to break... My goblin town. The shade still doesn't take courage. They just gave me a massive buff by doing that, <laughs> which is they insane. They should not have so, done that. Don't worry, we're not going to let him bring a shade and goblin town to every event. No, that. that but it's nice. like heads up, if you're watching this and you're involved with the rules team, please just hear that for what it's worth. I think red allies. I really, I really like the idea. I, like I really do. I think it adds a lot to the game and it does encourage themes and it makes it easy for me as a tournament organizer to just say at this tournament. No red alliances. That solves the yeah, problem. That that straight up solves. So the if you want a theme event, issue, that's yeah. the way to do it. But if you want a theme event, you need to do that because yeah. if you don't do that, 
You can get Elendil allied with Boromir of the White Tower with Aragorn, and their heroic actions don't impact each other. So Aragorn can for free control the movement of the game, go first and take his troops, and you leave Boromir and Elendil behind so they can wait. You charge, set everything up, they countercharge, and you look like these shotgun mega heroes go in around and just destroy stuff, and for free heroic combat in and even further behind the line and then really destroy stuff. They get ridiculous. If you get, because <laughs> they're red allies, it's a huge advantage. If you get, so you got to yeah. be really careful. And if you really want a theme event, the new meta, absolutely, you need to ban red alliances to be able to create a theme event. Yeah. Or don't just play clean rules, but expect a competitive event and expect people to bring cheesy stuff. And as long as everybody's clear, that's the way the event's going to work, then that's fine. And like, really, I have no problem with that as long as it's clear and that's the way the event is intended to run. So there is definitely right now a really interesting gap between competitive events and theme driven events. And Red Alliances is a perfect tool. Like, it's perfect. Just cut those off, don't yeah. allow them at theme events, and it really does clean the whole thing up, and you'll get things like the Legendary Legions, which yep. will be exactly what you which want. Which are actually, some of them are really good. Yeah, and some of them, I'll suggest the Shire Legendary Legion, I don't think it works. I don't think it really actually affects the Shire in a positive way sufficiently. But it's kind of fun. It would be really neat. So, yeah. Anyway. So, back to TGX. And we've talked about some of the armies that we saw. Yeah. Really big stuff was fun, and big stuff seems to be the new meta. You need big heroes to be able to win in the new meta. Not big casters, though. Not big casters. That's the one thing I will say. It's changed. A lot of the big heroes in this game... Like, how do you stop a Balrog, really? Well, not even that. <laughs> you take the King of the Dead, and then you can one-turn a Balrog. It's disgusting. It happened a... to me. <laughs> well, all these new armies, like the ones that are doing really well, are just shock. Like, yeah. big hero shock. You have at least four characters that just charge in and blitz the army. And casters yep. can only deal with one guy a turn. It's the same thing that used to happen with a bunch of fell beasts yeah. with rates. You could just come in and heroic combat and trash a bunch of things and throw all over stuff and then but fly into the back and the kill a bunch more stuff. The thing about this new meta with the blitz yeah. heroes, they're cheaper. Yeah. And they do the exact same thing. Yep. Take a look at Rohan. Great example. Um, well, yeah. I wouldn't use Rohan Even as an High example. Even actually is a worse example. Yeah, really good. High old, really good. I'd actually say you. Gondor. Yeah. Gondor's the best. Because if you get Gondor, you that. have Elisar, you have Gandalf the White, you have Faramir, you have Boromir. Elisar's not You cheap. have here in the Tall. But Faramir, You have the multiple really heroes, heroes, which are really 100, 100 points or less, that have plus one to wound at fight five with three might. That matters. Like, what do your infantry do against that? They just die yeah. <laughs> in droves. Yeah, even defense eight infantry are going to struggle. And to top that up, Gondor is a horde. Yep. They're a horde army that was a ridiculously With high defense. Bolt throwers, if you want to get interesting, or trebuchets, if you want to get even more interesting. <laughs> really interesting army. So, last meta, what used to be the Iron Hills problem, where the Iron Hills faction had, you know, good Everything. high fight, good high strength, Everything. high defense. Interesting special rules and a big kit of parts. They could play with anything from ballistas to crossbows to spears to, to like everything. That's Gondor now. Yeah. Or Army of the Dead, perhaps. Well, Gondor is even worse than Iron Hills was before because their shooting is arguably better. And on top of that, they have blinding light. The Iron Hills ballista is the one thing that nothing in the game has a counter for. Yeah. Which is disgusting. <laughs> that I honestly hate it. Even though it went up He's like tired. He's points. being more harsh than he usually is. But no, the Iron Hills ballista. It's, what do you do to counter it? Well, so if we were going to add some stuff into the next FAQs, it's, the Goblin King yeah. still a hole. The Goblin King can throw a strength three goblin and knock over anything in the game that doesn't have the you can't knock me down rule, yep. right? Except for Smaug and a Mumak. The Goblin King can knock out Smau um, Sauron or a Balrog just by throwing a squishy goblin at him. So Which that's that's still a bit of a, that's a hole. I think I've used it twice. Yeah, he tried to use it against me and I just told him he wasn't allowed to. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> another hole um oh goodness uh, yeah the, the iron hills ballista and the fact that the, is strength seven or strength eight strength seven that's right? a strength eight strength eight um with twirly whirlies put to a fire from smoke yeah that doesn't make sense to me um, or if that, you throw it through an ant rock the ant rock you would think yeah. in real physics would tw the twirly whirly would get latched up all on the rock and the whole thing would either fall with sort of combined momentum means it stops or it would go with the ant rock which is strength 10 thrown a whole lot harder back on the twirly whirly and but it doesn't the way the rule is written the twirly whirly takes out everything so there's some yeah. gaps in the rules still and then on top of but that the that's always going to be true yeah. right these guys have done a great job writing up a good rule set that is generally yeah. so well balanced there's going to be little gaps in it it's just a big rule set there's going to be imperfections but they've there's done a great job so much to cover and i love yeah. that games workshop is committed i mean don you guys talked about this in your wow. video garrett 
Um, but every six months we're going to get an FAQ update. That's good. <laughs> the good so hopefully is, they'll clean up some of these things as they go. The FAQs we've gotten so far, you can count usually the number of things written in them on one hand, which says something about the cleanness of the it rules. Does. It does. It proves. It just proves that they worked hard on the rule set and they covered it pretty well. So yeah, there's always going to be little Side things you note, missed. You did it well. I'm going to show and throw an image of this up on the screen. This is not a rules problem. This is an aesthetics problem. If you go into the Army's book, every profile has their stat line, their war gear, their special rules, and their heroic actions. Flip to Isengard. You will find Lurts, who has his war gear, his special rules, and then a list of bullet points. No heading. <laughs> Heroic actions is just a bullet point. He likes Lurts. And he's got a friend who plays Isengard. Yes. Kyle, good on Which, you. it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's literally the one profile in the whole book where they're just like, yeah, we're just not going to get him right. better. So, they did an amazing job, but there's little things that get missed. That's and the way it is. Th this is how picky we have to be to find things that are wrong with it. So, there you go. That's a sign. you got to read all the books and look at that close to be able to find a problem with oh, it. Yeah, yeah, well said. Okay. All right, what have we missed? For TGX... Great terrain, great looking armies. Kudos to the winners. They worked hard. They did really well. Oh, yeah. First, second, and third place were uh, Andrew right. Brock came yep. in first. Again, Devin Marino. Again, <laughs> Matt Iverson. Again, I mean, these guys win. They <laughs> yep. play well. They win. So good on you guys. I mean, you always earn it. And no bitterness or resentment. It really, you earn it. One of oh, these I days, know. I want one of those trophies. I don't know. I'm going to have to ban you guys from coming to my event so I can win a trophy or something. But <laughs> we'll figure it out another time. Um, oh, boy. Yeah, obviously, I'm not going to do that. Okay. The necromancer does not work. So, okay, what did we learn? What did you take? Uh, I took... I wrote it up like a few days before when I ditched my other list. He tends to get do last-minute major list changes. So, so anyway, you took Hunter Orcs with Azog and the Necromancer? I took, yeah, I took Azog and the White Warg fully decked out. He was from Azog's Legion. I had the Triple Alliance of Hunter's Legion and Dark Powers. So from Dog Azog's Legion, Alliance. I had Azog as my general. The only reason he was my general is so he could have Master of Battle. Um... So he decked out six Berserkers in his Warband, and that was all he had. Six Gundabed Berserkers. And then had Fimble from Azog's Hunters, uh, mounted in a Warg. He was leading, I think it was ten Hunter Orcs, and then one Hunter Orc mounted in a Warg with a bow, and then a Fell Warg. And then the Necromancer was leading, I think it was, ten Hunter Orcs and three Fell Wargs, and one Warg Rider or something like that. And then I had so the Lingering green Shadow allies. with... Two fell works. Yep. Yeah. So basically, Azog, channel Shroud of Shadows on Azog. Azog tanks whatever you throw at him. So all green allies. That was literally big hero what hitting power, big caster, and lots of numbers and some mobility. So good, you think? Good mix of stuff. You'd think. Um, every now and then the dice turn against you and you have an off day. Well, in Necromancer, two hundred fifty points for casting one spell a turn, which honestly, the only reason you take him. Is for that shroud of shadows, and if and you're with not this list, well, the only yeah. reason you take. And if you're, he's not doing that. What is he doing? He's got a list of spells on mediocre cast values, and a crap ton of will. Fight seven, strength six with an insta kill. But so, he's yeah. only one attack, so you throw him into combat. But he is not worth his points to throw him into combat, yeah. which meant I was essentially just playing like over a hundred points down. In every single one of my games, because the Necromancer he, never pulled his weight. He belongs in other lists. He's a full green ally yeah. on this, but this list didn't quite work out the way he yeah, thought no. it would. It's, no. it's a 250 point investment in making Azog even more miserable. Which, I mean, Azog's miserable. You don't need but, to do. Well, take a 35 point bat swarm instead or something, right? Some Something, anything. You don't need to strengthen your strengths. You need to compensate for your weaknesses. And that list just had, it didn't have enough models. You need to play to your strengths. Well, yes. But you need to, yeah. So he spent too many points on his strengths. Which left him with a low model count. That's what we think. You never know. If he played the exact same list again, it might go differently. But maybe. It was a tough event for him. You know, I, we I were all it. competing for the bottom. Brent got the wooden spoon. We were on our way. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> with the defense for army and him just having a line of camels and just going, okay, I see you have a battle line. I'm going to move. You don't have a battle line anymore. <laughs> it was kind of brutal. Or I have an Azog. Which I moved first. I charge your hero. You swarm with camels. I do have a bunch of guys around Azog blocking so that you can't get to him. Camels kill all those guys, get to Azog, and kill Azog with camel hits. <laughs> it was pretty. Bad. When does that happen? <laughs>
Like, so, Charles, you were rolling well. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. That was like the biggest like ah, moment I've ever seen. When you lose... This is when he was wishing he had archery and could have chewed up a bunch of camels first or something. I did have archery. I had like no, 20 shots. Hunter or had archery. better shots. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Tough like, event for him. So what did I learn? Yes, sir. Are you done? Key lessons. Yeah, that I'm, was... I'm trying to cut his misery short here. And then... The, <laughs> the, me the memories. All the memories. Okay. <laughs> and <laughs> the one game... I, I don't even remember what my games were. Shoot. I think I lost like all of my games. Most no, I won two of them. of them. I lost three of them. Uh, the one game I won, it was my first game against Friar Justin, the guy that won Best Painted Good with his Grey Company. It was in Lords of Battle, and I have Azog. Yeah, and he had. An it army wasn't of even a fight. It's not even. It wasn't even funny. Necromancer was just like Shroud of Shadows every turn on Azog, so that he wasn't even allowed to shoot me with his archery. Azog gets into combat, he gets a might back for every single model he kills. Starting everyone with in six might because he had the weight ward. And master of battle. Yeah, so so every time rollers. they strike against him, I get it for free. And every time I kill them, I get one might back. Yeah, pretty brutal. So he brutalized the twins, Legolas, and a crap ton of rangers. He basically just mauled his entire army while my army just ran into his rangers and died. <laughs> so his army fell heavily and his hero cleaned up and made the difference like the back entire again. army it was ridiculous kind of crazy and he ended the game with full might and he had, crazy. he had three rangers left at the end of the game i think it timed so out as did his job in that one in the necromancer no i tabled him to. no i tabled him so now justin's a great sport and a really good player but yeah sometimes the scenario in the army you're up against just yeah so some lessons from you my army i mentioned was a balrog a cave drake two dwellers in the dark and a fire-breathing flying dragon. Killing thousand power. points of Moria. Killing Honestly, I, I took it for fun. I didn't expect it to be overly competitive. It's not very many models. <laughs> no. Every loss is very expensive. They put enough wounds on my dragon, I lose a 350-point model. It just flies away. It's, I went to have fun. And I went because I wanted to finish up some ice conversions, which you might have seen in the last video, that have been on my paint bench for a while, uh, and that we needed to finish up for Monster Mash. I just wanted to go and have fun. And I did. I, I think I won three games and lost two. Yeah, he did better and than me. All of my games were reasonably close. A couple of them could have swung either way. Some epic moments. I had some cheesy epic moments. The seize the prize scenario was oh. one of our scenarios. Oh, I remember that. I my poor over. opponent. <laughs> fantastic sport. Ian was a great guy. Really fun to play. Playing Goblin Town. You're talking about heirlooms we just passed. Though. I am. I'm sorry. It wasn't seize the prize. It was heirlooms. So we set up the objectives around uh, the board. And you're supposed to go hilarious. and scare at all the objectives. And... You never succeed. Most of the objectives end up sort of one by one disappearing. And then whatever the last objective is, by default, if there's only one left, becomes this heirloom that you're searching for, right? So we're rolling the dice to see if you find the objective. If you roll a six, you get lucky, you find the objective. It never happens. What happens? The first objective I dig up, excuse me, the first objective that he... It was he dug it up. I dug one up before that. The first one that he dug up was the heirloom. He dug it up with a lonely goblin in the corner who he figured was never going to actually succeed. And the rest of his army was spread all around the whole board. My army's five models that are a whole pile of points in one corner of the board all together. They came in in just a couple of warbands and they're big enough and they move around fast enough. But I flew the fire-breathing dragon into the Balrog's warband and then most of my army was in one spot. The cave drake moves eight inches a turn. He can just hurl combat a little bit if he has to. So he, he didn't take long to get with. I had my whole army in one corner. That's the corner where he dug up the prize. It was brutal. So then he's got the goblin scribe and, I don't know, like 10 goblins or something in this little corner. So he takes the heirloom and runs into a building and hides. And I spent the rest of the, the game just trashing everything, including the building, fire breathing on the building. So we, we, we got the TO to help us put a rule in and we pulled in some of the siege rules from the old version of this game. And we gave batter points to the building so that we could burn it down. And this poor goblin just you know, hit in terror while the dragon and the balrog and everything were just mauling this building. And he sent whatever he had in his army to try to dissuade so the balrog just stayed out and killed stuff. The dragon would just charge and kill stuff and then breathe fire when he could. So we spent two hours, these two and a half hour games, we spent two hours trying to get this goblin that was hiding in this building. Eventually broke his army, a bunch of guys ran away, that goblin ran, it didn't run away ran out of that building, which I had half burned down, into another building. And <laughs> Unfortunately for him, I got him while he was running between the buildings and sold the prize. But it was just a fun game. It was really cheesy. 
Um, if Goblin Town was going to play against a monster version of Moria, I think that was the way to do it. it I walked over to his table, because I was done my game at that point, and saw a goblin with an objective marker beside him inside a building, and the entire everything around it. A whole lot of scary monsters. <laughs> I'm like, monsters. wait a second, you can't even <laughs> go in that building. Yeah, well, and I couldn't. The building had a door that was you know, 25 mil model wide, and I had big monsters. The only thing I could do is tear the building apart. I don't even <laughs> remember what I said. I'm like, if that's the game right there... That would have been funny. That, that and I wouldn't even have minded losing that way. It would have been funny. Oh, man. So we had a lot of fun. Um, and then we had some other epic moments, too. So you know, I'm, I'm on a desert board in the middle of a desert oh, with my that. ice moria. Yes. My fire-breathing, ice-breathing dragon flies into a big rock in the middle of the desert. It's like it's not a rock. It's like a pillar. Yeah, but like it's, column rock. It's something that stands up off the ground where other models wouldn't even be like able to really get up to. In, it's like four inches tall. It would take climb And tests. it's like a sheer cliff. He's got mostly a Cav Harad army, a lot of camels and a big Mumak, trying to get around this rock so he could actually come to the rest of my army, and my ice-breathing dragon just, and poof goes the Mumak, and and poof goes a much, it was terrible, I felt so bad for him. But he was a great sport about it, and we had a lot of fun. I toasted his army, but, and then the rest of my games I lost, so the King of the Dead, one turn the Balrog. Um, Legendary Legion. It was ridiculous. Well, you know, but well played. Legendary Legion. So he's got a whole bunch of Army of the Dead. He's got the King of the Dead, and he's got the Three Hunters. Aragorn, Free Might, controls the movement of the game. If he doesn't win priority, I had a Low Might army, so he would just win it half the time. If he didn't win it, he'd call a heroic move with Aragorn. Pepper his army all over the place, so that if I'm going to breathe fire on Aragorn, I've got a bunch of in the ways to take, and then the area of effect is going to have a two-inch blast, so he kept Aragorn more than two inches away from everybody. So I couldn't put any points on his general needed to kill Aragorn to have any impact on the movement of the game. I only had five models, he just kept me tied up. And the Army of the Dead, high courage. My army, relatively low courage. The Dwellers are high courage, the Balrog doesn't care. But the Dragons are reasonably low courage, and the, the King of the Dead has Harbinger. So even lower courage, so I wasn't charging. It was brutal. He just controlled the game, surrounded the Balrog, used Aragorn to strike up, Use the King of the Dead to put double strikes and, you know, two strikes, two wounds, kills off the Balrog. King of the Dead wounds Just the like that. on fives. Yeah, things you take fives. for granted. Because he kills it, because he wounds on Courage, Balrog's high Courage, but it's Courage 7. Defense 7, Courage 7, whatever. Wounds it on fives, and he's got Might. And if it's trapped, four dice, two fives, and he's got one Might, and it's out. Yep. So if you roll five and a four on four dice, Balrog's dead. King of the Dead. Lesson, he can kill anything. You surround him with some good stuff, especially Aragorn. Aragorn, King of the Dead, is a brutal combination because Aragorn controls the field of play. King of the Dead kills stuff. And if you keep them together, they just keep killing stuff. So he took, you know, one turn at a time, took out a big monster. And he took out the Balrog, took out a dragon, took out the Cave Drake. I'm broke. You know, the Dwellers are fine, but they're way off in the corner. The other army of the dead guys figured, figured out how to kill them. So I think I ended up being tabled that game. I don't think we actually finished the game. I think he just wiped me. <laughs> But yeah, that was my lesson. And then the other matches were fun too, but big lessons for the day. Those were the sort of big moments of my games. Yeah. I took it for fun. I had fun. It was great. Thanks, Evan. Yeah, thanks, Adam. Great, great event. Really well run. Um, any other highlights? We couldn't go to King's Moot. We had we missed an event in the league. We don't miss yeah. many of the events, but family stuff in the summer, we couldn't go to the last event. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the OSPGL channel will we tell us heard about that one. Anything from that yet? Yeah, guys. Well, we saw the normal thank you posts that show we up on the We didn't see who won. Page. Who won? I need to know. <laughs> Somebody is like dying inside here. So, anyway. Did Ben win? That's my first question. <laughs> right now, Ronan and Ben are at the top of the league for points. Is yeah. it a 100 point or an 80 pointer? I think Please it was say an, it was, it was an 80. 80 pointer. Okay. I don't actually care. I then. wouldn't have made you miss a 100 pointer. But... Okay. I don't actually care if it's an 80 pointer. Both Ben and you know I score, we're both maxed in that We've sense. got lots of lots of Ooh. guys in this league who are actually playing really well this year and doing well for points. So it's yep. good. That's good. It's fun to me. It's fun when the league has some room for competitive play and for rewarding competitive players yep. and complimentary room for non-competitive play, for thematic play, for people yep. who want to get best painted awards or who want to just bring a theme army and just play for fun. And we do have room for both of that in this league. Some of the events cater more one way or the other. Absolutely. Um, but we've got room for both, and I, I appreciate that. So, All right, I think we're pretty much done for tonight. Upcoming videos that we are going to be talking about soon. There will be a, a proper wrap-up for the Monster Mash series. We've got a couple more fun things we're going to do there. We will continue to do some workbench videos on some of the stuff we've been working on. 
And we got a couple surprises that we'll talk about after Monster Mash is done. But we've got a when couple the final Monster Mash yeah. moves. Out. How many are there left? Three. Might be four. Three. three. Might be three. One, two, three. Yeah. There are three left. There you go. Not That's telling you what they are. There are three left. Half a spoiler. And when the three are released, like when they're all done, then you'll get a teaser. <laughs> but then we'll be ready. Uh, and we'll, can, we'll do some army reviews too. We've got some army reviews coming up on some of the armies we think we might know a little bit about. So Honestly, we could probably talk about like three or four right now. We just yeah. haven't gotten around to doing because they take forever. Well, if we want to do them well. We want to make like, them worth you watching. They're like hour and a half but videos. This has been a long a video already. Stuff. Yeah, so we got to wrap this up. Thanks so much for watching. My Govine, please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and we will be back soon. We'll see you again soon.